Johnny Dollar. This is Jack Price, Johnny. Corpus Christi, Texas? That's right. Try Western Life Insurance Company. No. No? No, Johnny. I've just taken over the office of Providential Property Insurance down here. Oh, that's a good company, Jack. Only I'm beginning to wish I had. Oh, what's the matter? Less than a week heading up this operation, and I get presented with a claim for $465,000. Wow. But maybe, I hope, you could keep us from having to pay it. Well, I don't know about so, that. Johnny, if you'd like to earn yourself a nice big commission in addition to your expense account, of course. Uh, now, let me see my commission on 465000 Hmm. Tell me all, Jackson. Well, you fly on down here and I'll be glad to. Right. I'll grab the first plane I can. CBS Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Providential Property Insurance Company, Corpus Christi, Texas office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Can Canary matter. After hanging up on him, I realized that Jack Price hadn't told me a single thing about the case he wanted me to handle. But who cares when it means a commission on nearly a half a million bucks? So item one on the expense account is $128, plain fare and incidentals, Hartford to Corpus Christi, Texas. Price met me at the Cliff Mouse Airport. We piled into his car and headed for town. Johnny, I've made a reservation for you at the Driscoll Hotel on North Broadway. Oh? You'll get yourself a good night's sleep, and you can start on this matter first thing in the morning. Well, what's the matter with right now? At least you can tell me what it's all about. Well? The Canary Diamonds. Canary? Yeah. You mean uh, they're for the bird? Oh, now, wait. Uh -huh, I'm sorry. Matter of fact, Johnny, they happen to be the most perfectly matched set of yellow diamonds in the world. A necklace, a brooch, and a solitaire, and a ring. Called the canary diamonds because of their color. No. They were stolen from Mrs. Clara Barnes, Smithwick, Tyson, Brownfield. Oh, brother, that's a mouthful. Now, who is she? Now, the reason she's so loaded with jewels, and about everything else an old lady could want, is that Tyson made a few million dollars in oil, and when he died about four years ago, he left her a considerable fortune, mostly in the stock market. Tyson? J.R. Tyson. I thought you said her string of names ended in Brownfield. About a year ago, she married young Augustus Brownfield. Oh, oh, I see. Brownfield loaded, too? He's been up and down over the years. Mostly down, I'm afraid. Ah, uh, until he married the rich widow Tyson. Well, yes. How old is he? Ten or fifteen years younger than she is. About 45, I'd say. Uh-huh. So that's it. Now, Johnny, you and that suspicious mind of yours. What, Jackson? You'd I... make a suspect out of your own mother. Oh, look, where well, there's nearly half a million dollars involved. Yeah, that you're wrong if you think he had anything to do with the loss of these jewels. I'm sure of it, Johnny. Yeah, we'll see. Oh, I've known Gus Brownfield for years. I'm sure he's on the level. That's why, in spite of all his wife's money, he's trying so hard to make a go of his little cannery business. Cannery? It's just a small operation for the luxury trade. What do you mean? Oh, kumquats, guavas, lychee nuts, things like that. For the fancy restaurants, real expensive stuff. Oh, I see. His customers are mostly places like uh, Antoine's in New Orleans, Romanoff's in Beverly Hills, uh, the Chambord in New York, even some of the fancy cafes in London, Paris, and Rome. But now, how and when and where did these canary diamonds disappear? Well, it was several weeks ago. They'd gone out for the evening. No servants? Uh, only the deaf old cook in her little room in the basement. The others were all off duty out of the house. And? Well, when they got home, she went to the wall safe to put back a pair of earrings she'd worn. When she opened it, she found the canary diamonds were gone. Anything else taken? No. In spite of the fact there were other valuable things in the safe. They called in the police, I hope. Oh, of course. Well, what did they find? Nothing. Fingerprints? Whatever prints may have been on the dial of the safe have been carefully wiped off. The only thing the police are sure of is that it was a professional job. Hmm. Hey, Jack, who knows the companies in that wall safe? Only the two of them. To Mrs. Brownfield. You're sure of that? That's what she told me when she reported the loss. Oh, she reported it? Yes. And he was the only other person who knew that combination? Johnny, they were out together that evening. Where did they live? Let's go over and see them. At this hour? Sure, why not? Well, besides, I told them I'd bring you over in the morning. So what? And if they don't expect us, well, who knows? Maybe we'll learn more than when they do. Johnny, if this is because you suspect Gus Brownfield... Now, did I say that? It's what you mean, isn't it? Come on, Jackson, let's go see him. Well... All right, Johnny. Whatever you say. The Brownfield home was a mansion, a beautiful place, worth plenty of money. 
Mrs. Clara Barnes Smithwick Tyson Brownfield was about 60, I'd say. She was a lady in every sense of the word, with a sort of quiet dignity that goes with wealth and good breeding. Her husband, Gus, was at least 10 years younger, and, uh, well, he seemed like just an ordinary, hard-working, nice, good-looking guy, sincerely devoted to his wife. Yeah, I must admit, I liked him immediately. But then sometimes that's a danger sign. Anyhow, he pretty much repeated what Jack Price had told me, including the fact the police had gotten nowhere. So, if there's any way I can possibly be of help to you, Mr. Dollar? It's not so much the money, Mr. Dollar. Though, heaven knows, the diamonds do have monetary value. But... That is the understatement of the week. <laughs> well, yes, I suppose it is. But when I think of some thief taking those beautiful stones out of their lovely mountings to dispose of them... Mr. Brownfield, you and your wife were together all the time the uh, night they were stolen? Yes, we were attending a party at the home of... Oh, no, wait... Yeah. Why, yes, dear. You left us for a few minutes to go over to the cannery. Yes. Why? Well, when we'd passed it on the way to the party... Yes? Well, I'd noticed that someone had left the lights on. Probably someone who'd worked late. Who? I, well, frankly, I don't know. Well, go on, please. Well, the party'd been rather dull, so I used that as an excuse to leave for a while. Yeah? I drove on over to the cannery, took care of a few odds and ends at my desk... Turned out the lights and then drove back to the party. Then we came home and found that the diamonds... Mr. Dollar. Yes? If you're thinking what I think you are... That your husband had plenty of time to come here during his absence from the party? Well, now, look here, Plus the fact that he knows the combination of the safe... Young man. No. What? No, Mrs. Brownfield. I was thinking of something you said a minute ago. About the thief disposing of those jewels. But, Dollar, if you think for one minute... Just, uh, hold your horses, please, Mr. Brownfield. Young man, this is outrageous. I refuse to listen to anything more from you. Yeah? Yes. Well, I think you'd better, Mrs. Brownfield, if you want the Canary Diamonds back. Next time you refresh, enjoy a frosty, ice-cold Pepsi-Cola. Sociability, Charlie. All right, Kay, how's this? Pepsi is light. Refreshes without filling. You like to refresh? Have a Pepsi right now. Well, offer it to everybody, Charlie. I will. Enjoy Pepsi at the fountain. It's delicious at home, too. Have one at lunch. Or with a snack. Charlie. At the beach or at Wherever you go, wherever you're thirsty, Pepsi is there. It's here, too, in our Be Sociable song. Be sociable. Look smart. Keep up to date with Pepsi. Drink light, refreshing Pepsi. Stay young and fair and debonair. Be sociable. Have a Pepsi. For the weekend, have plenty of Pepsi around. Pick up an extra carton today. CK, I'm sociable. With Pepsi, everyone is. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> Dollar, this is ridiculous. Is it, Mr. Brownfield? And I suppose the fact that my cannery business is not particularly profitable... Oh, I didn't know about that. I suppose you've decided that that's a motive for the theft of the diamonds. Well, I suppose it could be, couldn't it? Now, listen, Johnny, this is ridiculous. Take it easy, Jack. This is not only ridiculous, it's insulting. I must ask that you gentlemen leave this house immediately, Mr. Price. Of course, Mrs. Brown. Now, just a minute. No. I've had enough of this. this Did I say I suspected your husband, Mrs. Brownfield? Did you need to? No, because I didn't mean to. What? That's right. But I did say that your talk about how a thief might dispose of the stones gave me an idea. You mean about how someone else might have taken them and will try to get rid of them? Mm, Something like that, Jackson. But who, Johnny? Yes, Doc. Young man, I still resent your implication, deliberate or otherwise. On the other hand, Mrs. Brownfield, since your husband might seem to be the one logical suspect... Young man. Perhaps I'd better play a little hunch I have before talking any further with you folks. Young man. Come on, Jack, take me over to my hotel. My snide suggestion that Gus Brownfield at least could have taken the stones had got a reaction, all right. But it only convinced me that he was in the clear. The police had decided the whole thing was a professional job. And it would have taken a pro to crack that wall safe. And a pro would have sense enough not to try disposing of such distinctive stones in this country, in or out of the original settings. Ah, a pro would have some way of getting them out of the United States. But to where? 
And heavens knows he'd had plenty of time to get them almost anywhere. So there in my hotel room, still acting on a hunch, I was about to make a transatlantic phone call. But I didn't. Not then. Yeah? Johnny? Who's that? Doc. Doug Johnstone? <laughs> That's right. Well. <laughs> Johnny. Uh, come in, Doc. Come on in. Well, so you couldn't stay away from our fair city, huh? Yeah. Oh, how'd you know I was here? Hey, uh, sit down. Oh. Why, oh, uh, I just happened to run into Jack. Uh, Jack Price. He told me he just dropped you off and told me why you'd come. Oh? I knew that if I didn't step in and give you a hand, why, uh, <laughs> that other Jack could never forgive me. The, uh, other Jack? Yeah, Jack Johnstone, that wayward brother of mine out in L.A. Oh. Dramatizes all these wild cases of yours, <laughs> puts them on the air. Hey, you know something, Doug? I've often wished I could drag that brother of yours into some of these cases to see what it's really like. <laughs> you know, all he does is write them up and then put them on tape. If he'd help me figure some of them out for a change. Uh, won't I do? Huh? Matter of fact, I have figured this one out. Oh, so now I have competition. Hey, you're serious? That's right, John. The man who stole the Canary Diamonds is now resting comfortably in the local Who Scout. You're kidding. Then I'll keep this clean. Oh, sure. Look, Johnny Gus Brownfield's an old friend of mine. So when the stones were stolen and looked as though Brownie might be suspect, well, I decided to play detective. Yeah, well, uh, keep talking, Doug. And I hope you haven't put me out of business. I've tried. <laughs> who knows? Maybe I have. Uh, anyhow, I'm, I'm pretty familiar with Gus's cannery and the people who work in it. Yeah? And there was one man in his shipping department. Well, when I heard about the robbery, I started digging through old newspaper files down at the library. Took me weeks, Johnny, but I knew I'd seen that guy's face before. And sure enough, I found his picture alongside the story of a jewel heist that took place 15 years ago. Who is he? Les Murdoch. That means something to oh, you, huh? Fingers Murdoch. Sure. Safe man for that International Gems gang back in 45. That's the guy. Yeah, but I thought he got 20 years. Well, good behavior got him off nearly two years ago. And he was working in Brownfield's county? In the shipping department. Oh, well, right. I told the police about it. We descended on him a couple of hours ago, gave him a cock and bull story about having found some of his fingerprints around, and uh, he confessed. Well, good, good. Good work. Well, now that I've solved the case for you, you can buy me a drink and be on your merry way back to Hartford. Sure. And the jewels? Um, the jewels. Well? Well, Johnny, the police have tried every trick in the book on him. He won't say what he's done with them. Ah. Uh, in other words, my end of this case is only beginning. Uh, what do you mean? Bring the dirty criminal to justice? That's for the police, not me. What I'm hired to do is get those diamonds back. Johnny, if Murdoch won't say what he's done with them, and believe me, believe there's nothing in the world that's going to make him... You got any bright ideas? What'll you do? Well, you want to know something, Doug? You got a good question. Smoking more now, but enjoying it less. Have a real cigarette. Have a camel. So good. Have a camel cigarette. So rich. Have a real cigarette. Have a camel. So mild. Have a camel cigarette. And here's the reason why. Best tobacco makes the best smoke. You can say that again. Best tobacco makes the best smoke. Have a camel cigarette. If you're smoking more these days, but enjoying it less, then change to Camels, the best tasting cigarette of all. Start to really enjoy smoking again. Now back to yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the canned canary matter. I went down to the Corpus Christi Central Jail and wasted an hour trying to get something out of Fingers Murdoch. Go on, Dollar. Get out of here and let me sleep. Murdoch. And don't give me this bull again about going easy with me if I tell you where the rocks are, because I don't better. Look, listen to me, Instead, will you? Instead, I'll just serve another stretch, and then when I get out... If you live that long. Then I'll pick up the dough for him and live on Easy Street. Then you've passed them onto a fence, huh? Did I say that, Dollar? Now, go on. Get out of here. You bother me. Oh. 
Then I remembered about some of Murdoch's earlier activities, about his international connections, about the impossibility of successfully disposing of the Canary Diamonds anywhere in the United States. Item two, ten cents for a phone call to Mr. Brownfield. Yes, there had been a shipment of canned goods the day after the robbery to an outfit in Paris called Imperial Import Company. The shipment was supposed to arrive there late today. Item three, 12 bucks for a transatlantic phone call to Paris to a wormy little character named Louis Dumasac, who had another name for himself. Uh, uh, oui, monsieur. This is your oldest, your dearest, your most devoted friend, Le Chakri, the great cat. Yeah, devoted friend, huh? You mean as long as I keep forking over good American dollars for information. But of course, monsieur. Sure, somebody else came along with a bigger bankroll, you'd sell me out in a second. Oh, no, no, mon ami. You touch me to the quick. Sure. I, I mean, to have you put it so blunt. All right, now tell me just one thing. What do you know about canaries? <laughs> canaries? That's right. Uh-huh. Well? They afford the birds. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, monsieur, that's not a, a very funny thing I've just said. Oh, very funny. So what about the Canary Diamonds? Well, alas, I've never heard of them. But I'm sure that for a slight consideration, if I can, I can find out all about them for you, say, for $500. Now, listen, your old pal, Francois Dubesson, the fence. Yeah, Dubesson. What? Oh, that miserable, that, that no good, that double-crossing. I love him dearly. Now, what's that mean? Millions he has made smuggling jewelry and paintings into this country from your United States. Now, with your help at times. But of course, monsieur. But now what has he done? What has he done? Closed up the antique shop that he used as a front for his operations. You mean he skipped the country? Oh, no, no, no. He's still here in Paris. Doing what? Is it, is it not unthinkable that so clever a crook should turn to a legitimate business? Uh, uh, under another name? What kind of business? Produce. Produce? Oui, oui. Caviar from Russia, cheese from Holland, fine sausages from Germany. And canned tropical fruit from here in the States. Oui, yeah, but how did you know? And he calls it the Imperial Import Company. That is so. Then tell me where I can find him and I'll cable you a hundred bucks. But of course. <laughs> Item four, a real wild one. $488, transportation to the airport, to Chicago, to Paris, France. Then a cab to the little warehouse called the Imperial Import Company. And somewhere along the way, I picked up a 39-cent kitchen item that just might help solve this case for me. Francois Dubasson was more than a little surprised to see me. Monsieur Dolan? Yeah, yeah, surprise, huh? And what are you doing here in Paris, huh? Well, I want you to help me find some stolen jewels, Dubasson. <laughs> I help you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> After the trouble you have made for me in the past, it is to laugh, monsieur. Ah, well, you go right ahead and laugh, but uh, maybe I can persuade you. By waving that pistol in my face? Huh? I want to look at your latest shipment of canned goods from the United States. Can... canned goods? <laughs> I'm glad to see you. Come, I'm on, not... come on, now. Where do you store the stuff for this phony import business you're using as a front now? If you will put down that gun... Maybe through this door, huh? Well, we'll yeah. see. Monsieur, monsieur! Well, now how about this? Will you kindly explain what you mean by this intrusion, huh? Yep. Ten cases of fancy tropical fruits from the Brownfield Cannery in Corpus Christi, Texas. And why not, sir? Only one of these cans doesn't contain fruit. I beg your pardon. <laughs> As if you didn't know. All right, here you are. Take this and we'll get to work. And just what is this, then? Well, now, Dubasson, that's a fine old American institution. It's called a can opener. A can? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll pry open the cases and you open the can. Monsieur. Uh-huh. Until we find the canary diamonds. All right, here now. We'll start with this case right here. But I know nothing of the canary diamonds. You are going to wheel that can opener until you do. Monsieur Dolaire. 24 cans to a case, 10 cases. That shouldn't take you too long, though you might raise a handful of blisters. There you are. Get started, brother. Have you forgotten? You have no authority here in Paris. Oh, have you forgotten this 38 might give me all I need? And, uh, of course, I can always call in the police. Police. But I, uh, I won't unless you make me do a song. I, uh, I, I would not like the police. Oh, I know, I know. And if you want the truth when it happens, I'll kind of hate to see them catch up with you. Huh? Sure, with you in the clink, I wouldn't know where to turn when I'm over here looking for something smuggled in from the States. Then, but all I'm interested in at the moment is watching you get to work with that can opener. Well? 
Go ahead, Dubasson. No. No? What do you mean by that? It will not be necessary. I shall show you the case, the very can that contains the canary diamonds. That easy, huh? Oui, monsieur. Each of them bears a mark known only to me. And, of course, to the unfortunate fingers murder I could stole them. Too bad, Dubasson. Eh? Well, I'm really kind of sorry to hear that. You are sorry? Yeah. I kind of hope to stand here and watch you sweat some of the rottenness out of your system. Thanks to its Paris representative, the company was able to arrange for getting the stones back to the U.S. As for Dubasson, well, I suspect he was long gone when the police arrived at this place. Expense account total, including the trip home, $1,121 even. And, uh... Don't forget my commission on this one. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Hi. Maybe you'll recall this tuneful reminder of times past. <laughs> This is Dennis James with something else worth remembering. It's this. You're so right to stay regular with Kellogg's All Bran. See, it's the normal, natural way to youthful regularity. The whole bran content of Kellogg's All Bran supplies your system with all the bulk-forming food that you need every day. There's only one All Bran. It's Kellogg's All Bran. So relieve irregularity from lack of bulk, as millions do, with a bowl full of Kellogg's All Bran each morning. A double L hyphen B R A N. It's Kellogg's All Brand. Now, here is our star to tell us about next week's story. Next week, a wild flight across the country after a beautiful girl and possibly a murder. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Jack Edwards, Russell Thorson, Stacey Harris, Jack Crucian, Forrest Lewis, and Tony Barrett. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. John Wall speaking. Greed for gold promises doom from suspense on the CBS radio network. You know, Dooley, I've been reading up on hypnosis. Come here and let me try it on you. I'm an officer of the law and don't approve of making a man divulge his secrets. However, I'll stand by in case there's criminology involved. I just want to clear up some of his problems, Officer Suds. But I haven't got any problems. I'm the soul of contentment. Maybe that's your trouble. You're too contented. Lie down, Dooley. You're going to sleep. I feel so good. He's under my influence. Now, little tyke, get up. Go straight to the beer of your choice. Astounding. He's heading for Utica Club. Because Utica Club will still take the trouble to age beer the natural way. Utica Club, you see... He's got no problem. He's a happy, well-adjusted beer mug. Brewed by the West End Brewing Company of Utica, New York. You're tuned to 590 WROW in Albany. 530. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.